Good morning students, this is Mr. Boscarini and for today's lesson we're going to see a system of units. In the previous lesson we've seen how, uh, first of all, how to define a physical quantity, then we saw different strategies to deal with numbers large and small, including the use of prefixes and the use of scientific notation. Today we're going to complete our um, exploration of how to deal with numbers looking at units. Uh, the main purpose, the uh, learning goals for this lesson will be for you to be able to explain the need for a common set of units, identify the SI, and we're going to see what SI stands for, units for length, time, and mass, and finally, how to transform the larger and smaller units into base units and vice versa. Now, we have seen already that uh, a physical quantity is something that can be measured. And every time you measure something, you have to compare it to a given unit. can be a unit of length, can be a unit of mass, of mass can be a unit of time, and there are many more units out there. We're going to see a few more. Now, before the international system, that was SI stands for, actually, that's the acronym in French, and we're going to see why it's French. Uh, what happened from a point of view units? Every country, and actually more so, every district, every major town had its own sets of units. They had their own units for length, they had their units for weight, and so on. Um, and that made try, especially uh, from a point of view of trade, but not only, it made it very, very difficult. So, um, early on, uh, it was clear the need to have a common set of units, starting with the units of length, because of course you use the units of length to measure the dimension of everything, from the height of a church, the size of it, the width of a, of a street, and, and so on. And the, the best way they managed to do this was by using what we call natural units. Uh, basically using parts of your own body to measure things. For instance, you had places where they were using the arm's length, or the span length, or the foot. Now, it is obvious to everyone that everyone has a different foot from everyone else. So, whose foot you're going to choose? Now, most of the times, the choice was the king's foot. Of being the most important person in the whole kingdom, of course, he was also the person in charge of setting the units. And this was the case also in Italy. Now, uh, this picture here shows a, a place which should be familiar to most of you. This is the Battistero, just in front of a dome. This is actually the door of the Battistero facing Via Calzaioli. Now, if you go there, and I really encourage you to do so, but in the column on the right, there is a rectangle. And you might not have noticed before, or if you did, you might have wondered, okay, what is this for? Well, actually, that is what we call Lutprando's feet. Now, Lutprando was a king of Italy back in the Dark Ages. He was from the Longobards. And as any good king should do, he established a common set of units for length using a model of his foot. And what he did, he sent, they measured it, and then they sent these slabs of uh, stone around the kingdom, especially in very um, crowded places, in places where people could meet and see those units. Now, I went there um, a few times ago, and I measured myself. So you see one of our wooden rulers, and I measured the, the height of this rectangle, and it came out to be 43.6 centimeters. Now, I don't know how much familiar you are with um, the international system of unit, or centimeters in general, but this is a pretty big foot. And people seeing this initially thought, okay, this Luke Prando my must have been a giant, uh, giant by the standards of his time, but also for our time. Um, now, the, the catch here, of course, is in this word here, 
is not Lutbrandus foot, it's Lutbrandus feet. Actually, this is the size of two feet one after the other. As you know, the two feet are never the same, exactly the same, so this was one way to make an average. Now, this is one way to solve the problem. But of course, this solution cannot stand for long. What happens when the king dies? Uh, what happens when a new king arrives? What happens if you change form of government? You can't rely on uh, the properties of a human body. So, at some point, it was decided we have to take units from something which is a little bit more fixed, like the size of the earth. And this is what exactly the French did, uh, more or less at the time of the French Revolution. We're talking about the end of the 18th century. Uh, this is what we call the Age of Enlightenment, a big advancement from the point of view of, view of philosophical thinking, arts, but especially science. And one of the major advancements, one of those that really made a long-lasting impact to this day, was establishing what we call the International System of Units, or also known as the Metric System. Because the first unit they decided to establish was actually the meter. Meter comes from a Greek word which actually means measurement. So really, it's a good choice of word. So, after discussing how to establish this, this unit, it was decided that it was going to be, they were going to measure the length of the meridian of the Earth, divided by 40 million, and this 40 millionth was to become the meter. And again, how can you, when you spread your, uh, your findings, you make samples, usually of a very durable material like bronze, and send it around. And what you see here is again a picture taken by me, this time in Via de Cerchi, which is very close by to the Battistero. It's a small street that runs from Via del Corso all the way into Piazza della Signoria, where Palazzo Vecchio is. And you might notice in one of the walls there's a niche, and instead there's a, uh, this carving, which is exactly one meter long. So presumably there was actually a metal sample of a meter which has disappeared. I don't know actually what happened to it. Okay, so this was the beginning of what we know today as the International System of Units. And as you can see here, today is a bit of a different kind of lesson. It's more of a historically based. I think it's very, very important. It's important for you to understand why we're doing this, why people wanted to find a new set of units, and why it is so important. And you would think, okay, we are at the uh, midway through the 19th century at this point. Uh, the international system of units get more and more spread out through the continent partially thanks to Napoleon, partially thanks to interchange between scientists. So at some point, especially at the end of the 20th century, you would expect that everyone was on the same boat, everyone was using the international system of units. Unfortunately, this is not so even today. And there's one prime example of uh, a disaster, which is really, we can speak of, uh, use such word, uh, caused by using different units. And we're talking about the famous incident of the Mars Climate Orbiter of 1998. So the Mars Climate Orbiter, as you can imagine, was a satellite, a probe, more um, specifically, um, designed by NASA, so the American Space Agency, which was supposed to be launched by Earth, or from Earth, reach Mars, and then orbit. Uh, so we call an orbiter a probe that goes around. In this case, it's really a satellite. Uh, other possibility is a lander, so something that actually lands on the ground, and then if it lands and then goes around the ground, we call it a rover. So, the Mars Climate Orbiter was an orbiter, and of course was supposed to study the climate of Mars, because Mars has an atmosphere, although a very thin one, therefore also has a climate. Um, so, the Let's fast forward to December 11, 1998. 
uh, the Mars climate orbiter was successfully launched from Cape Kennedy or Cape Canaveral, whatever you want to call it, in Florida. And this is an actual picture of its launch with a Delta II rocket. It flew for almost a year, almost a year, September 23rd, 1999. This is when the probe was supposed to enter Mars orbit. What happened, on the other hand, is that the um, NASA control mission lost contact. And after several attempts, they finally uh, conceded that the probe was lost. Now, you can imagine many people were upset because, um, first of all, designing and building these objects takes a really long time, many, many years of research, study and work. And there's a lot of money, there's a big price tag attached to these projects. This one in particular had a price tag of about 300 mega dollars. So 300 million dollars. Now, I must say, even in case of disaster, this money is not all um, destroyed because you still learn from doing these things. Nevertheless, an inquiry was started to figure out what happened. And when they found out, they were really, really shocked because what happened? Now, the probe itself was constructed by another company, Lockheed Martin. They're very big in making fighter planes. And they designed some of the software. Unfortunately, regardless of the fact that NASA specified you have to use international system units, Lockheed did some of the software using the so-called imperial units, the units that we use in uh, the US. So using pounds instead of newtons for force. The bottom line is this thing entered Mars atmosphere at a greater speed than, accepted, than, than um, expected and the whole thing just crash landed on the surface of Mars. Now, this is really a shocking example, but I want you also to look into this one. If you have some time, look on the internet. It's another prime example of a uh, problem. In this case, no one was hurt, nothing was destroyed, but still a possible disaster caused by using different units. But now let's get to the real topic. So, what are the main, or as we call the base unit of international system of units? Um, in the physics course of grade 9, we're going to focus on three base units. The units for length, the units for time, and the units for mass. Now, the, uh, in the international system of units, the base unit for length is the meter. And as you can see, you can spell it different ways. This is the British English spelling. Uh, if you're using American English, you just swap the E and the R. The symbol or abbreviation is small m. And when I say instrument, remember, these are physical quantities. They need to be measured. And we're going to do a lot of lesson on choosing the best possible um, uh, tool. For instance, you can use a ruler, you can use a tape measure, or many, many more. And we're going to see quite a few of them. The base unit for time is not surprising me. The second the symbol, the oil abbreviation is S, and again, many possible um, tools we can use. We can use a clock, a stopwatch, we can use a sundial, an hourglass. I mean, again, depends on what you want to achieve. And finally, mass. Now, as you can see, there's a footnote because, as we will learn better later on, mass is not weight. So, uh, the unit that we have here that's going to be measured in kilogram is mass. And this is a bit strange. You see here, uh, why kilogram? Kilo is a prefix, means a thousand. So why we're using the kilogram is not the gram. There's an historical reason behind this. And I really want to stress that you should check the National Institute of Standards and Technology from the U.S. Then unit base units in the International System of Units. So going on with the mass. So the unit is a kilogram, the symbol is kg, and a possible instrument is the scale. More on this in the next lesson, but that's all for now. Goodbye from Mr. Boscarini.